Hi, welcome to Top Farmers Know How. I'm Sean. In this video, we'll talk about how to prevent mastitis around calving time. For the two to three weeks before calving, cows are in the Springer mob. Utter hygiene is important during this time. Cows close to calving are naturally immune suppressed, and if they are lying in dirt and muck, their full udders are exposed to mastitis causing bacteria in the environment, increasing their risk of getting mastitis. So having a clean springer break will help prevent mastitis. Keep springers off paddocks where effluent has been spread, even those from past seasons. It may help to shift springer breaks more regularly. You can also begin milking any springers which are already leaking milk. If a cow is leaking milk, it means her teat ends are open, making her vulnerable to mastitis infection. Milking these cows will reduce pressure inside the udder, hopefully allowing their teats to close between milkings. If cows are leaking milk, mark them well so you remember that they won't have good quality colostrum when they calve. You'll need to feed their calf colostrum from another cow as soon as possible after calving. Even though the springers may not get milked, teat spraying them when they come through the shed to disinfect their teat ends will also help prevent mastitis. For the first eight milkings after calving, cows are in the colostrum mob. To provide the highest quality milk for supply and avoid demerits, all cows entering the milkers from the colostrum mob should be free from clinical mastitis and have a normal somatic cell count. To check for clinical mastitis, strip all colostrum cows at every milking. It's normal for colostrum cows to have swollen, sensitive udders, and for their milk to be thicker and more yellow than store-bought milk. But clots, flakes, or watery milk are never okay. These are signs of clinical mastitis. If you find a colostrum cow with clinical mastitis, mark, record, separate, and treat her following your farm's mastitis treatment protocols. Teat sealant left over from dry off may look like flakes in the foremilk of colostrum cows. So ask a co-worker for a second opinion if you're not sure. Blood in the milk of a freshly calved cow is either from severe udder swelling or from bruising or injury. Keep these cows in the colostrum mob until it resolves and continue to check them at each milking. If a cow with blood in her milk appears sick, ring your vet. To monitor individual somatic cell counts, before drafting cows into the milkers, you can RMT all the colostrum cows at their eighth milking. It's normal for some colostrum cows to be RMT positive around calving time, and this doesn't necessarily mean they have subclinical mastitis. So if a cow is RMT positive at her eighth milking, keep her in the colostrum mob and recheck her at each milking. Only draft her into the milkers once she is RMT negative. If she continues to have a positive RMT, especially in a single quarter, then it probably is subclinical mastitis, and you can work with your vet to decide what to do next. They'll probably recommend taking a milk sample to find out what's going on. Watch our Find Mastitis in the Milking Shed video to learn how to perform an RMT and how to take a clean milk sample for mastitis culture. Make sure you have a clear marking and recording system so everyone knows which cows are staying in the colostrum mob longer than eight milkings and why. A final important check before drafting colostrum cows into the milkers is to make sure that you have followed all withholding periods for dry cow therapy to ensure that the milk entering the vat is free from antibiotic residue. Whether it's springers, colostrums or milkers that you're cupping up, it's important to only put cups on clean, dry teats. When droplets of dirty water or muck hit open teat ends, the risk of mastitis goes up. So if cows come in for milking with dirty teats, give them a quick clean with a dry paper towel. Don't hose udders. If teats are wet, it's best to dry them before cupping them up. For all cows, effective teat spraying is the single biggest step you can take to prevent mastitis. Cows should be teat sprayed with a commercial product mixed and applied following the manufacturer's recommendations every time they go through the shed. Watch our Top Farmers video on managing mastitis during lactation for more information about teat spraying. 
after milking give all cows immediate access to feed to encourage them to stay standing while their teat ends close. There's a lot you can do to prevent mastitis over calving. But when you do get cases of mastitis, keep accurate permanent records. This will allow you to monitor mastitis and sort out problems early. Dairy NZ Smart Sam says that over calving, if you have more than 8 clinical cases per 100 mixed stage cows, or more than 16 clinical cases per 100 heifers, you should seek out some help from your vet or milk quality consultant. Hopefully you've found these tips for preventing mastitis at calving useful. Check out our other Top Farmers videos to learn more.